Great. So yeah, kind of moving into um, you know programs on the ground uh, in Marin, uh, Community Action Marin um, works on en low income energy efficiency programs. And today we have Chris Miranda, who's the safety net services manager with Community Action Marin and uh, Laurel Hill, um, who's the uh, director of safety net services. So I'm gonna pass it off to Chris and Laurel. Oh, Laurel, you're on uh, mute. Thanks, I think Chris is gonna start us off. Hello everyone, my name is uh, Chris Miranda with Community Action Marin. I am the Safety Net Services Manager and uh, Community Action Marin is one of uh, Marin County's uh, Light Heap Service Providers, which is a low income energy assistance program. <clears throat> Excuse me. Light Heap is a federally funded uh, program that helps uh, low income households and uh, Community Action Marin is the local administrator. Uh, so far, we've been reaching over 800 households each year. Currently, as we uh, face an ongoing uh, pandemic, uh, we've been seeing an increase uh, in households applying for uh, energy assistance program as well as energy consumption. And the Light Heap program is a great resource to use for those low income households or unemployed households that need uh, energy assistance or bill pay assistance. The way for them to apply would be to contact <coughs> Community Expert directly to uh, access these uh, services. For us, it all starts with outreach, preemptive uh, mailings of either applications, postcards, or uh, co-branded flyers. Uh, then it goes into connecting uh, those clients with the application, either by uh, application request. <coughs> Each application uh, that is completed is submitted then we uh, provide some type of follow-up, reaching out to the client, sharing information about, <coughs> excuse me, pg e assistance, as well as weatherization and energy efficiency. We will then connect those households with weatherization through either MCE or the weatherization program, <coughs> either through, a, <coughs> excuse me, sorry, through a referral source, which would either be San Francisco Peninsula Energy Services or MCE. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, uh, Laurel will continue. I'll take the, it from the, here. Excuse yeah. me. Sorry. Thanks for Chris is uh, is uh, charging through with a, with a cold, so I'm going to help him out with the next few slides. And uh, so, as Chris was saying, one of the things that we do is we help people pay their energy bills. And that includes PG&E and it also, we provide wood and propane for people that live in more rural areas and we re rely on that for their primary heat source. But um, one of the other things that we do is we, you know, we provide that emergency service, but then we also want to look to um, providing people with some energy education so that they can find out you know, you know, what are the ways that they could reduce their energy bill and of course, one of those is making their house uh, more energy efficient. And so everyone that qualifies for utility assistance would be income eligible for weatherization. And so um, some community action agencies, or I'd say a lot of community action agencies do utility assistance and weatherization services. Because Marin has a small population, we actually partner with um, Peninsula Energy Services, which is a part of Central Coast Energy Services, and they are able to provide services across um, uh, several counties. And so every time we do a, a, a LIHEAP application, the client is asked, are you interested in learning how to you know, reduce their energy bill? So we provide educational resources, but they're also asked, are you interested in weatherization? And so the... Um, the process there is that you know someone will contact them, do a phone screening, and if it sounds like they might be eligible for services, then the next step would be that someone will come out and actually do, do a home assessment. And this is, it doesn't matter if somebody's a renter or if they're the homeowner, 
the pro the process is free to you know regardless of who owns the home the eligibility is based on whoever lives there and for the last number of years we've partnered with the um, marine marine clean energy and healthy homes because there are a number of different programs in the in marin county that can help people with uh, with either energy at retrofits, but also health. So it might be things like a grab bar for a senior um, and or backup uh, generators for people that are using medical equipment that's re reliant on energy. And so um, previously, you know, a number of different programs were offering services and they may or may not end up in the same house. And the, the way that we've worked things now is whichever agency is the first to go into that home and do an assessment, they're gonna assess for not only the services that they provide, but the services that all of the partners provide. And so that way, um, if somebody's going in to do an energy assessment and they're maybe they're doing a blower door test to see if they need weather stripping, they're also gonna note, do they need a grab bar? Do they need someone to come in and you know, move electrical outlets or move furniture so that it's safe. So it's really a, um, you know, a more comprehensive program. And one of the things that we're um, looking at doing in the coming year is increasing our energy education program. Because one of the things that we do know, um, I've been doing this at Community Action Marin for many years. And this year we're seeing a lot, we're seeing a number of newer clients because uh, a whole different group of people has been economically affected by the pandemic. But typically we tend to see some of the same clients year after year. And so while we know that for most of them, it's that their income is so low that they're always gonna have some kind of an economic challenge. And if this is a program that can help them out economically, they're gonna come back. But we also wanna make sure that we're providing them with um, information, education, and services that can help them to overall reduce that energy bill. And um, we've been, you know, we, we've been doing this here in Marin for now mm, 40 some years. And um, it's, you know, to working together with other agencies, we've seen that that's really, that's really made a difference in, in getting the services out to different households. Um, one, one of the things that we've seen in Marin is that um, there, there is not a huge, and I think it's one of the reasons we don't do weatherization necessarily within agency is that you know, the limited housing stock actually impacts you know, how many buildings we can, we can service as we can only, you know, only weatherize the same home so many times. Um, so there are, there are definitely some challenges. And another challenge that we've seen over the years is that uh, it can be difficult sometimes convincing the Marin landlords that they wanna take advantage of our free service. And in other counties, um, you know, when somebody finds out that they can have you know, improvements made to their rental property at no charge, they're, they're all over it. But unfortunately, because of the high cost of living in Marin, some landlords just basically can't be bothered that they know that they're going to rent their property out for a premium, regardless of whether they take these extra measures. So that's, you know, one of the things that we've done in our combined outreach with other agencies is to really you know, work to get the people that are that own the homes to really buy into um, taking advantage of these programs. I think that. So thank you. Any questions about any of that? Yeah, we have about 10 minutes for questions. Yeah, I'm not seeing any right now. Um, oh, here we go. Uh, what upgrades are the most common that came from anonymous attendee? I would say one of the most common upgrades would be things like uh, would would be things like weather stripping and insulation. Uh, we we definitely find that an or window replacement. That's where people are losing 
a lot of energy, which is why, um, you know, one of the, the typical things that they do when they come in to assess the home is to do the, the blower door test to see, you know, wh where is that hot air going or where is that cold air coming in? So I would say that that is uh, very common. Um, less frequently, you know, we are also able to sometimes you know, replace hot water heaters or even entire heating systems in some cases, but I would say that the most common is probably windows, weather stripping, um, insulation. Uh, that's kind of a similar, uh, in, in that vein of questioning, um, do you know how much energy savings are, are typically seen after weatherization? Is that something that's quantified maybe in the bills? Ah, that's a great question that I, that I don't have the answer to. Um, we don't as an agency we don't as an agency follow up with the same people that necessarily got uh, weatherization. We, we probably should though, that's a great idea. Um, what are your sister organizations in other counties? Oh, sure. So um, there are 32 community action agencies, not all of whom provide energy assistance. And so um, I'm, I'm not able to name them all. However, if you wanted to see in any, you know, in any given county in California, who's providing light heat weatherization services, you could go to the community services and development website for the state of California. And under services, look at, um, it would be under energy services. And I know like, for example, over in San Francisco Peninsula is also the provider of weatherization services there. They're also in San Mateo, um, down further in Santa Cruz. In, um, I think if north of us, it would be North Coast Energy Services. I think they have a copy, uh, they're doing Sonoma, Napa, I think Mendocino and Lake. And so um, there are, yeah, there are agencies throughout the entire state. Um, here's one. Uh about mobile homes, are these services available to, to that building sector for mobile homes? That's actually, a, I don't know the answer to that. Um, I believe so, but I'm not 100% I'm not positive. Here's a question on funding. Um, where does the funding come from to provide these families with energy savings? It's a federal program, right? It, it is, yes, it's a federal program. So it's coming out of like Department of Energy and then it's block granted to the state. And so it comes through the community services department at the state of California, and then is allocated out to each county. And, um, and the, the allocations are based on low income population, but then there are other factors. Um, I, I mean, like weather, which it's, it's influenced by need, but like, for example, um, in the Midwest or on the East Coast, it's, you know, it's definitely a winter, a winter program. In other states, we see a lot of summer use. Um, in Marin, we don't get super cold or super warm. So we're kind of, pretty much year round, but um, it is, it's stuff, it's a federally funded program. And so this year, and this is um, just <laughs> spread the word is that this year we have more money than usual because we've got CARE Act funding and we anticipate that that will increase. And what we're seeing this year, we're actually having a hard time getting clients to come in and apply for services because of the <laughs> moratorium on PG&E shutoffs. So no one's gonna get their, their bill they're not gonna get their energy shut off between now and April of 2021, since the Public Utilities Commission had PG&E put a uh, shutoff moratorium in place. And an unanticipated effect of that is that people are really concentrating on um, the bills that they need to pay that do have immediate consequence. So everybody's worried about their rent and their food and their car payment and what have you. And they're letting that energy bill slide and we're seeing people come in with, with some definitely high energy bills. And this is something that's happening sort of statewide. Other agencies are reporting the same thing that people aren't um, being as maybe as proactive as they should. And so we really want people to come in and get that energy assistance now because these are all contracts that have expiration dates 
and they are sort of use it or lose it. Like if Marin can't spend our money, it'll go to a different county and that's you know, true anywhere. And so we wanna make sure that we're spending the money we have so that in 2021, we'll have more money because we, you know, we're not seeing, we're, I'm not seeing that a lot of people are gonna be immediately turning, returning to work. And we're actually, we're, we're working with the state and with PG&E to actually identify um, customers throughout Marin County who have what they would consider really significant um, energy bills. And we're gonna reach out and contact those households directly to see if they qualify for assistance. And we've heard some reports of people having $10,000 energy bills. We really wanna get to people and get them as much assistance as we can before their bills get up into that really, um, into a range where it'll be difficult for us to assist them. Yeah, uh, we got about five minutes. Um, I'm gonna thread two questions together. What are your most uh, effective outreach methods? And um, can you talk more about streamlining client applications between MCE and CAM, Community Action Marin? What opportunities do you see in uh, replicating this model for other uh, jurisdictions? Yeah. So, so, um, so our definitely our, our most effective outreach comes from you know, trusted community partners. And so we have relationships with, with agencies throughout Marin County. And so I'll just say is for an example, you know, West Marin is it's a rural area. Um, most people are, you know, a, a good 40 minute drive from our offices, you know, if we were open, which we're, we're mostly not. But a lot of people out there, they don't know who we are necessarily, or, um, you know, or there's, you know, there's just, just a trust factor that people are more comfortable going to a place that they know. And so we have arrangements with a number of agencies throughout Marin County. So West Marin Community Services would be one, North Marin Community Services. And so we actually, we train staff throughout our agency and at other agencies on, you know, how to, how to vet people for eligibility and also how to, um, how to vet their app, their documentation to make sure that it, that it'll go through. And so that is definitely something that we, we want to do more and more of is have local community partners assist us in both spreading the word and getting applications out. And for example, right now, Chris and I are planning a big outreach to, again, that all the different agencies and rural communities to let them know that, hey, it's not just PG&E, we can also, you know, we can get you a cord of wood. And so we'll, again, we'll be advertising sort of more heavily in, in West Marin since that's more um, being wood heated or propane heated is more common in the rural areas. And, um, and, and this is definitely the, the streamlining process between us in MCE and of course um, Penin Penins and Peninsula Energy Services is that really every eligible client is is passed on and so there is you know there's a paper assessment and there's a phone call assessment for for everyone since a lot of people you know they come in they're concerned about the PGME they're not thinking about weatherization and so we really do try to follow up as much as possible and um and, and we're seeing that we're getting we're getting more referrals that way when we work together, um, or somebody might come in through an agency like um, Marin Center for Independent Living. So their their primary need might be that they need a grab bar in the shower, and they may end up getting utility assistance and weatherization services at the same time because we have these reciprocal arrangements in terms of doing those those uh, assessments in the home. Yeah, I think that that network model of folks coming in from different agencies and being referred mm -hmm. is really important and effective. Um, let's see if we can uh, squeeze one more in. Um, has anyone been exploring policies to require landlords to do energy upgrades modeled after SB 407 for water conservation? Mm -hmm. I haven't I haven't heard anything along those lines. Okay, yeah, that might be a follow-up. Um, so yeah, we're at uh, 10.05. Thank you, Laurel, so much. And Chris, thanks for powering through that.